Okay, so after some prompting from other YouTubers and some friends, I decided today that I would share a really personal story that happened to me a couple years back. I know this is not my typical type of content, but I decided that this video can inspire and give faith to those who may be going through some really hard times in their life because with my story, I was literally rock bottom. So my YouTube channel actually all started in 2016 after I attended the Muay Thai guy, AKA Sean Fagan. I attended his Muay Thai training camp in Thailand. I got to hang out with him outside of training and was really inspired by what he did for work, which was hosting training camps in Thailand and having an online platform to share his love for Muay Thai. He told me I could do the same. I didn't believe it at the time, but I did film my first few videos with him and his camera. And after I returned to Toronto, I invested in a cheap camera and a cheap laptop and I made some tutorials with uh, little to no effort. For all my like OG followers, you may remember those tutorials where I filmed it in my condo gym. They would be on like those rubber mats. Behind me, there would be equipment like the bench press or like curl machines. Uh, essentially, the quality was really bad and I just didn't put much effort into it. I honestly did not think I could or would ever be a YouTuber. I kind of just did it for fun. So it was my way of journalizing my martial arts journey. So back in the day, we would go to Jiu Jitsu class with notebooks and we would write down techniques that we learned. A few weeks later, we would read our notes and be like, what? It just, just didn't make sense. So I had the idea of filming whatever I learned in Jiu Jitsu and just posting it online. So, you know, other people can see it, but also it was my little way of collecting techniques that I've learned and if I ever wanna go back to see it, I, instead of looking at my notebook, I could just refer to my YouTube page. So I was actually an accounting dropout. I remember specifically I failed statistics two twice and that's what caused me to just drop out and I ended up getting my diploma in police foundations and then I went back to university and finished my degree in criminology. So my main goal was to get a, a, a job that my parents deemed normal, which was uh, something in law enforcement um, and I wanted to be a police officer. So fast forward a month later, I actually got a job as a special constable in a town about an hour away. For those that do not know, my father was actually sick all my life and at that time he had passed away. Some of the money they gave me um, through his insurance, I used to purchase a condo. So since my job was quite a far commute, I decided that I would rent out my condo to a friend or an acquaintance of mine for a very, very cheap under the condition that when I would want to come back to Toronto to say party or whatever, I could crash on my couch any weekend that I come back. Now, one weekend, I so happened to decide to have come back to Toronto to hang out with some friends and I found four to five RCMP officers investigating my condo. Uh, everything was like bordered off, so I wasn't even allowed into my condo. It turns out there were packages of fentanyl that were shipped and intercepted by RCMP to my condo under the name Jackie Chan. That was my fight name that was given to me by my old coach, Crew Jeff. It turns out that the main and sole suspect was my friend because they were already following him for the last couple of days. So of course, when they interviewed me and wanted to ask me questions, I was very, very cooperative and tried to answer every question that I could. I answered the questions because A, I thought they knew that I was innocent, B, you know, I want to help them. And three, I had just become a police officer, you know, special constable. So I was, I was, I was on their side. And you know, I want to be seen in the best light, right? Unfortunately, I was wrong and they actually looked at me like I was a corrupted police officer. So it wasn't until a few days later where my supervisor called me, told me I was suspended because I was under investigation. And then a month later of waiting, they finally decided to arrest me. And I was actually sent to a detention center where I was there for two and a half weeks. Stupidly enough, I again cooperated when they brought me in. Of course, with what little luck I had, the processing took two and a half weeks to get me out on bail because of an error in their system and a long weekend holiday happening in Canada. I was then sent back to my hometown in Ottawa where I was under house arrest for two and a half years. Fentanyl was a really scary drug that was getting a lot of attention, especially at that time. It was killing people and the prosecutor was seeking 18 years. Like they really wanted to make an example out of me and my friend or acquaintance. So I could not leave the house unless I was with my sister or mother who were my shirties. I could not touch a cell phone or the internet because the drugs were apparently shipped from Belgium. 
so they they said that like if I could have access to the internet or have a cell phone, I could continue doing uh, the drug dealing. So I was like super super depressed. I literally remember telling my mother that like if I were to go to jail for something I did not do, I would kill myself. I stayed home watching movies and, and TV shows. I remember specifically like rewatching Prison Break. It was a really hard hard time. So it wasn't until my friend Larry came to visit me and you know he motivated me and told me to uh, push content out there and just put it out there and see what you know maybe maybe you can make something out of it. So after some motivation I decided I would uh, make content, I'd film content and I would ask my sister to upload it onto YouTube because I wasn't allowed to uh, touch the internet. And that's actually when I started getting some traction on the channel. I knew I could never go back into law enforcement so I thought like, hey, what, what else am I good at? What else do I have going for me is this small little channel and my passion for martial arts. So I decided to like put all my eggs in one basket. I just put all my effort into the channel and that's when I actually started seeing results. Um, so my poor mom would like drive me to the gym even during the winter and because we didn't want anyone to know that I was under house arrest or, or like, why is your mom coming with you to the gym? My mom would like wait outside in the cold while I would train or teach a class. My head coach, uh, Nick Castigla, he he's the one who gave me a job and helped me out. And uh, yeah, so I'd go to the gym and I would try to like make some content. At this time too, it was very abnormal for people to film sparring and, and using the camera in general. So it was it was a rough time. Uh, but like I said, I, I didn't think I could do anything else with my life, especially after being in that situation. So I started making content. And that's all I did for the two and a half years. I'd pray every night to God and my father and try to be positive. But the reality was that I was struggling. It just so happens that one time training at the gym, my now fiance had just joined the gym. She was new to town and I eventually told her my situation immediately. It's funny because when I ask her today why she believed me, she'll just say that my personality or demeanor just doesn't fit one of a drug dealer. But I think that's her nice way of saying I'm a bit too dumb to be some mastermind drug importer. So during the 2.5 years while I was waiting for the trial, my channel grew and I found a way to stay motivated through my passion for martial arts. So finally the day of trial comes and as expected, all the evidence was directed to uh, my friend or acquaintance. They literally had zero evidence on me and it's so ridiculous because they changed my life upside down with no evidence on me. It's crazy how the criminal justice system allows that to happen to people. But anyways, trial was supposed to be three weeks. So I had like 18 family members take off work so they can come support me at trial. And you know what? It ended up being two days. I'm not complaining about it, but it's just, it's just ridiculous how it was supposed to be three weeks, end up being two days because they had zero evidence on me. And I, I still remember that, that moment. I'll never forget when the judge was like, Mr. Chan, you're found innocent. And like my heart just, you know, um, huge, huge relief. And uh, yeah, I just, it was, uh, it was a very, very, very hard time. Now, even though I was found to be innocent, I knew that being associated with this case, I could never go back into law enforcement ever again. And uh, I realized through my journey that uh, martial arts was my real passion and I continued to put all my effort into it and I started to uh, run the channel full time. I realized that coaching and helping people was something that I, I had a, a much bigger passion for. I honestly love my job and can't choose anything over it and I'm super thankful for all the opportunities I've had and all the people I've met through my channel. So long story short, be very careful with who you trust but do know that there also are good people out there you may be going through a rough patch. Everyone does, everyone has their own story, but do believe that everything happens for a reason. I truly believe that this was a blessing in disguise. It made me stronger, it gave me what I had now, or else I'd be in this small boring town being a police officer, being yelled at university students. Yeah, I honestly think it's a blessing in disguise. Everything happened for a reason. If, if you're going through a hard time right now, believe that things happen for a reason and um, stay strong and don't give up. Sometimes we go through rough patches, but we just can't see the full picture. And I, I think God is, uh, I, I'm not a religious person and I'm still not a religious person, but I've become a spiritual 
I've become more spiritual and I believe in a higher being now. And I believe there is a higher being out there that put me through this for a reason. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this little story. Again, I know it's not my typical content, but again, I, I, I believe that there are a lot of people out there that may be struggling or going through hard times. And this video, I hope, will inspire you to stay strong and not give up and push through whatever it is you're going through. If you guys like this video, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe.